Hey here is Steve Edwards and uh, I want to welcome you to another live mule and donkey Q&A clinic with the one, the only, Steve Edwards. Uh, for the next 60 minutes, we will be your tour guides into the theme park of mule and donkey across the United States and the world. You will find that we will go international. We're so glad that you're here to spend a few minutes with us. We go live every single Wednesday. Um, yeah, like I said, for an hour just to talk mules and donkeys uh, so that you can gain trust of your animal, get results in your training, and just enjoy what it is to be a mule and donkey owner, a mule and donkey driver, rider. Steve, how are you doing so far this week? Well, I've been a trailer repair person uh, this past week. You know, I bought a brand new truck and uh, back in December, and I uh, <laughs> Uh, I didn't know that my plug in the back where I hook in my trailer, when I turn on my left signal, it goes right. Turn on my right signal, it goes left. And if I want brakes, I have to put it in reverse. Yeah. Can you imagine? You pay $70,000 for a truck and the plug don't work. I put, I put a lot of miles in that thing pulling that trailer and I didn't have any idea. Had no idea. the electronics got all screwed up. From somebody putting the plug in incorrectly. So anyway, so now what I've been doing is fixing my own trailers, wiring and stuff like that. So that's what I've been doing. So if you saw an older gentleman in a cowboy hat pulling mules in a Dodge truck and he was signaling left and then turned right, y'all, you just saw Steve Edwards. Just saw Steve Edwards. That's good. Uh, yeah, things have been going pretty good. I'm out here. You're, of course, you're out there uh, in the uh, in the mountain area, the Superstition Mountain foots foots of the Superstition Mountains in Queen Valley. Uh, you know, rural area. I'm out here, city boy in uh, in Chandler, and it's been really sunny. It's been really hot. Matter of fact, that's how we're going to start things off. If you're watching, I just want to say thank you. Well, if you're watching, obviously you just heard that. You're watching with us right here, right now. We want to know you. We want to hear your name. That's really the first thing that we ask is that you uh, put your name, you comment with your name, where you're watching and what the weather's like today. We want to know that you're here. Say hello. Introduce ourselves to you. Uh, so that's the first thing we ask. The second thing we ask is that you answer or ask any and every mule and donkey question that you got so we can answer it. Today we're going to talk about the come along rope as we do every week. We're going to talk about some next steps. We're going to talk about next steps in ground foundation training. We're going to talk about cinch sizes for a new saddle, a whole whole uh, bundle of different things that we're going to address. And we want to be able to talk about your concern as well. So if you're having problems or you're getting ready to step into a new area of training, or if you're working on something and you just want to know if you're doing it right, because here's the thing with these mules and donkeys, especially the donkey, they can be so docile and you would never know if what you're doing today is going to cause problems six, nine, 12 months down the road. So just share what you're working on if you want to make sure that you're doing it the right way, if you're doing right by your animal and you're setting yourself up for success long term. So ask those questions. And then the third thing is that we ask you share the broadcast. And this really is just all about us expanding the mule and donkey community. Horses get the spotlight. We're aiming to take that spotlight away and say, hey, 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 look over here. This is real, the, real, the, where, where the real star is. So share that broadcast. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a, a like, a, a like on the uh, video and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and uh, share by just clicking the share button or tagging a friend or family member who would appreciate joining our community um, and let them know that you're here. So with that, I uh, want to go ahead and say hello to a few of the folks who have jumped on, and then we'll get into our questions. I uh, just want to say hello to Herman, watching from Arizona. Mark is watching from sunny Anza, California, 85 degrees. That sounds wonderful. It's, uh, it's about 106 here, so I'd take 85 any day. Kathy is watching from Elephant Butte, New Mexico. David Pingeli. There you are, David. Hey, David, did you did the, did the email notification come to you? Because I want to make sure that you got it. Steve, I got him yeah. the email, I think. Yes. 
All right. So David Pingelli, let me know if you got that. You're here. I think you did. Michelle is watching from Florida, 90 degrees. I'm going to be in Florida uh, in a couple weeks. Going to go to Tampa with my wife. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Ted is watching from Valley Center, California. Sarah is here over our first YouTube watcher watching uh, from South Dakota. Wendy, 77, missed you guys the last few weeks. Steve and Dave, did you both end up getting COVID? I've been worried about both of you along with your wife, Steve. I got COVID in November of 2020. Steve, have you had it yet? Well, we kind of think we got it when we was in Australia, a mild form of it, uh, but don't know for sure. Susan was down for close to 18 days. It yeah. whacked the heck out of her. Yeah. We're thinking she got some of that Delta, but, uh, uh, no, I, I, uh, I haven't been touched by it. I've been really fortunate and been blessed. Uh, I did get vaccinated since I was a, since I'm a first responder firefighter. So I went ahead and, and got it done. And now you hear all these stories and I don't know, you know? Yeah. We don't want YouTube taking us down talking mules and donkeys, so we're not going to say anything else. We want to keep rocking on YouTube, but yeah, uh, me and my family, we had it, and uh, that was in November of last year, and then Steve was in Australia uh, February, March of 2020, so it's been a while there. We're grateful Susan is uh, feeling better, it sounds like. Um, of course, you know, for me, I was exhausted for weeks, even months afterwards. So, um, yeah, to everybody out there who's still struggling with that, battling it, uh, all of our best to you. Uh, let's see here. David is watching from East Texas, 85 degrees and sunny. David, I've really enjoyed corresponding back and forth with you on uh, email. Thank you so much. Uh, Mark is watching from Valley Center, says, I used to live up there. I'm guessing up in Queen Valley, Arizona area. Thank you, Mark. S. Reyes is watching from 90 degrees, Colorado, ready for cooler weather. Aren't we all glad to see you guys wish there wasn't a magical wish. There was a magic pill for ear shyness. I'm ready to use my come along, but Ethel isn't. Well, let's just take a stop right there. Steve, I've got an ear shy mule. I know that the come along rope and then the rope halter is really where I want to begin with a lot of my training. What should I do? Well, you can really get into some fights here with these guys. Now, remember, the majority of the time that these mules and donkeys have got ear shy problems is because we put the bit in the same way every single day. When we go and we pull the bit in and we pull up on their mouth and we pull the right ear in, and then we pull up on our mouth, we put the left ear in. Loosen that bit up at least two notches, maybe even three, depending on the size of the ears, and put them up over the bridle, then adjust the bit after, listen to this, after they showed you where they like it the most. And how do you do that? You let the bit hang down. They will pick the bit up and pack it. But I want to go riding. No, go over, get yourself a glass of iced tea, sit underneath the tree, and watch the mule take his time to figure out what's going on with that bit. Allow them, they'll play with it, they'll pick it up, put it down, put their tongue over the bit, the whole bit. Don't worry about it. Pretty soon, they'll get tired of the bit bumping on their teeth. Now, your, your mules like this. These are the front teeth, the incisors. This is the back tooth, the canine on a John mule. On a Molly mule, okay, on a Molly mule, they don't have a canine, so you won't see that. So the bit will go down bumping their teeth. That's okay. They're not stupid. They'll pretend, they'll work with it, and pretty soon they'll pick up the bit and pack it. When they pick it up and pack it three times, then you adjust the bit to that spot. When you're done riding, always loosen the bit, drop it off. Then you don't create these problems. You see, that's that's how you create problems is things like that. I learned. That's how I, I made a lot of mistakes. Let's go back. Now we got to fix our mistakes. And we got the come along hitch. Now, number one, it is not important to put the bridle on or the come along hitch until the head is this. The head is down. 
nose tip to the left. Now, when the head is down, they loosen all five major neck muscles. When the head is down, they loosen the throat latch. When the nose is tipped to the left, their left brain is listening to you. You hear that? That's the way you put a bridle on, not up here, not over here, okay? But with the head down, nose to the left. When they are putting their head up or putting their nose away, they're telling you, hey, stupid. You are making me uncomfortable. That's what they're doing, okay? You can't blame them. They don't want their teeth banged and they don't want their gums all beat up. Just pulling the bridle on the same way every single day is worse than you pulling on them and creating a strawberry patch on the corners. That's what it is. So let's go back. Put our left hand on the nose, our right hand, we're gonna rub and rub and rub the eyes. And we're gonna left hand is gonna be on the nose and we're gonna rub the eyes. And when the mule, when the donkey drops his head and is starting to relax, you slowly move your hand up toward the ears. If he elevates his head, he's worried, wait right there. Rub at that spot until the head is down and quiet. When it does that, then move a little higher. Does that, moves a little higher. Then pretty soon you go really quick over the ears. Boom. Then come back and do it again. Three, six, nine, twelve. Today we're gonna do three. Head down, nose tip to the left, rubbing, kind of go up over the ears. A lot of these mules, you can rub their ears until you go to put something on them, like a bridle or a come along hitch. Well, what happens? Because you have inadvertently hurt them, created a lot of discomfort, created pain, whatever part of the country you come from, basically you've hurt them, okay? So they don't want you to do it again. So all you gotta do is keep from bumping their mouth, put the bridle on like I told you to, but spend the time, every one of you, nobody should ever have a mule that has his head in the air or his nose to the right to put a bridle on. Fix the problem before it becomes this problem to where now she can't put a bridle on at all or the come along hitch, all right? So uh, let's go down. Let's go back to this. Head down, no step to the left, right? Relax. We got a video we can show, you know? Mm, yeah. Of, of, uh, of uh, oh, I forgot her name now. Little tiny gal. Anyway, you see her put the come along hitch on the bridle. Yeah, I'll find it here and I'll share it in the comments section. Uh, Earshot okay. Mule uh, Halter. Um, yeah, if you're if y'all haven't checked out uh, the Queen Valley Mule Ranch YouTube channel, there is a lot, a lot of information on there, and I've got two videos that I'll share. So that's a great question to get us start uh, started off with, um, Reyes. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, Bobby is watching from St. James, Missouri. We've got Patty watching from, hi Steve, I would like to teach my donkey, okay, so Patty has a question. I would like to teach my donkey to pony off my gelding. Would you suggest teaching her with a come along rope or a rope halter? Absolutely, always come along hitch, folks. As far as I'm concerned, I don't ever wanna see another halter in my life, okay? We hardly ever use them, really. But here's the deal, don't rely on that halter, folks. All it's going to do is create your problems. Yeah, it's okay to have the halter. Don't get me wrong, okay? But teach them to be ground tied and have respect for the bridle or the, the come-along hitch, okay? So, yes, do all your work on the come-along hitch. Now, when you watch my granddaughter in her competitions, when she jumped off of her mule as a pirate to, to fight another pirate who was her mom, and they're throwing the swords all around, and there's a, there's, a, there's a mule over here pulling a boat, and her dad holding on to the mule. And they're jumping around and throwing the swords and all this stuff. Guess what? Neither one of them mules did much moving. They pretty much stayed right into place. Why is that? Come along, hitch, groundwork, ground communication kit. Before anything else, folks, before the riding, before the bridle, before any of that stuff, any of it, do the come along work first. Get your mule consistent where he has respect, respect. So when my granddaughter jumps off her mule, 
She's not leading by the uh, by a halter. She's leading with a rein to the bit. Yes, yes. When you see us go out and ride and work cattle, we don't have a halter on our heads. When I drop my rein on the ground, that mule has so much respect for that rein that it's going to stand still because it doesn't want to be bumped. You see, that's right. So come along, hitch, folks. Use that come along hitch. Yes, use your halter. I understand, okay? Uh, but, you know, if you ever watch me do demos, you'll see me use that come along hitch and very, very little on the rope halter. Yeah, so I'm going to put a link in the comment section where you all can check out the come along rope. But I'm just going to read. We've got 46 reviews from folks who have purchased the come along rope and who go out and use it. Um, and, I mean, here's just a few. Um, works wonders only have had it for four days. Mule responds great to it. She's learning a lot. Uh, this one's from Eileen who watches, uh, the come along rope worked really well. I had a great response from Smokey after using Steve's method of ask, tell demand. All I need to do was lightly pick up on the rope and my mule knew that I wanted what I wanted him to do right away. The rope is well made and sturdy. The delivery was fast too. Uh, this one, uh, is from Mickey who keeps long ears. Uh, the come along is a very useful means of communication to my mule. My mules don't act up in confusion as they are clear that I am a leader and what I am asking them to do. The videos are great and the technical support is fantastic too. The come along rope is a great tool for keeping my 17 month old mammoth's attention. She responds immediately to my cues and on and on and on it goes. I mean, these are, um, you know, here's, here's one from uh, May of this year. So glad we got our come along rope really helped with our training. Our mule Kate picked up the training real quick. So we're not, we're not, you know, promoting the come along rope as buy the come along rope. We're trying to tell you this is a tool you can use to get results. So um, really recommend that there. Um, who was that that asked that? Uh, was that Patty? Really recommend that there, Patty. Uh, get the come along if you don't already have it and then start with that. Um, so thank you very much. Cowboy Ken is watching 78 degrees in Connecticut and it is cloudy. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Mark goes, oh crap, I forgot to say hi. Hi Dave. Lo hi Dave and Steve. Love your show. There you go. Awesome. Thanks Mark. Uh, Valley Center, California. Fiona is watching from 20 degrees Celsius, Victoria, Australia. We've gone international. Good to have you here. Uh, Fiona, Judy is watching from Texas. Uh, Faye is watching from hot, dry, and crispy. Good day down under Queensland, Australia. We've got Albert watching from central Arkansas, sunny and 90 degrees uh, around the seams. Hi, Stephen, Dave, Ron in Virginia here from Berg Hill, Ohio. Rainy, but warm weather today. And folks, if you are just hopping on, uh, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. We meet so many amazing new mule and donkey friends uh, through this show, which happens every week. So my name is Dave, and this is Steve Edwards, and we do this every single Wednesday. Take a moment. The first thing we ask is that you share your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like in the comment section so we can know you meet you, say hi to you. Uh, that stuff means a lot to us and, and we would sure love to be able to share it with you. The second is ask any and every mule question you've got. And the third is if you're watching on YouTube, like and like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you are watching on Facebook, be sure to share the video on your feed. Um, Judy has a question, says, I would like to know how you measure your saddle seat size and if the size is marked on the saddle somewhere. Yes, the size is, is uh, on the left-hand side, which is the near side, right below the pommel, and right below where the tie strap goes into the slot for the keeper. That right there is where, uh, in that area, is right where the size is. Now, how do you measure now, no matter how I say this <laughs> to a lady, it's not our rump size, it is our thigh size. So, between the cantle and the pummel, I like to see an average of two inches. Now, it could be an inch and a half, it could be just one inch, but an average of two inches without your feet in the stirrups. 
You put your feet in the stirrups, it's going to kick you back two to four inches, depending on the length of your legs. So that's where I like to start. So I'm uh, around 200 pounds, and I'm 5'6", and I've been riding a 16 all my life. Um, so that's that would be what I would visit with you about when it comes down to saddle size. Folks, if you do have any questions about uh, the saddle, Steve's saddle, your saddle, whether it's working well for you or not, saddle sizes, saddle makes, what's right for a mule or donkey, you can always give them a call, uh, 602-999-6853. But in addition to that, muleranch.com has all sorts of amazing and free resources when it comes to helping you understand what your mule and donkey wants out of a saddle. There's some things that we want out of a saddle. And a lot of times that has to do with looks that has to do with, um, you know, sizing, things like that. But there are things that your mule and your donkey want out of a saddle. And that's what we educate you on, uh, when it comes to the mule ranch website. So you can just look at a saddle and know if you like it or not, but does your mule or donkey like it? Is that what they're looking for? That's what we tell you on the website. So check that out. Uh, James is watching from Maryland, 72 degrees and cloudy. Linda, the mule servant and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule from 72 degrees and overcast rural central Ohio. It is not a live stream without Linda, the mule servant and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule showing up. We're glad you're here. Susan is watching from Southwest Michigan, beautiful, sunny evening, 74 degrees and Steve and Dave on the live stream. I added that last part, but you know, it just felt like it was going that direction. Beautiful, sunny evening, go. 74 degrees. Steve and Dave, it just felt like natural. Glad to have you here, uh, Susan. Karen is watching from Whitehead, Raymond, California. Good to have you here again, Karen. Spent one month traveling and riding with my mule. Oh my gosh, she just dropped people's bucket list right there. A California to Michigan <laughs> to Custer State Park trying to figure out where my next ride about may be. Karen, good grief. Karen, we're going to have to talk to you. We want to hear details. We want details, Karen. Send us some details. Us send us some pictures. Yeah, get us some pictures. I already sent pictures. I sent them to you. Oh, are those the ones that I got? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to get those up there, Karen. Thank you so much. Jim is watching from Alabama, 73 degrees and cloudy. Hey, hey, hey. Yolanda is here from the Netherlands. Hey, made it back after weeks of trials with a hurt mule, still hurt, hurt bird, and uh, family member passing funeral earlier today. Our condolences, Yolanda. Thank you for sharing that with us. Really appreciate uh, you inviting us in to, to that with you. Uh, did not get time to help my mule with her hurt pastor and tendon due to all the things happening these last days. You know what, Steve? I've got some pictures here that Yolanda sent in. Oh, real quick, Yolanda's taking us international. Netherlands right there celebrating Europe. We're going to take a look at some pictures that Yolanda sent in uh, of yeah. shoeing. And so, Steve, I've got several I've got several pictures here. Um, let me know if you want me to scroll down, uh, select on any particular one. But I know that this was something that Yolanda and you had talked about a little bit. Yeah. And it's it's really tough uh, because, you know, folks, th there's a lot of good farriers out there. And uh, some of them have gone through school uh, and educated. Some of them have gone through the school of Knox, been educated, hard knocks. And that's me, school of hard knocks, been educated. Now, let's go back to the, where the shoe is in a second. Now, you see how unique that shoe is, folks. It has a uh, polypropylene bar across the back. And that is to lift up the heel because the heels were cut too short. Yolanda, you can let me know if that's correct. But the first shoer that she did, uh, had done, would cut it too short. And a lot of shoers do it that way, folks. Now, no, the foot is, the shoe is, is not completely straight. But neither is the foot, okay? So uh, uh, when we see this, after this meal has been probably another eight or 10 weeks, we'll be able to see it. But see the bulbs, which is that kind of rough part hanging down right there, those bulbs are not centered. Well, if you look at the hairline, uh, where the white and the gray come together, you can see how the bulbs should be. 
and they all be contracts and come down to the center of the shoe. So right now with the foot being cut crooked and this sort of thing like it is, with this corrective shoeing she's doing is going to better the foot. So let's go over to this next foot. Okay, now Yolanda, correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like a front foot and looks like a left front. Now, notice folks, the frog, that's the part that's V-shaped right there. Now that's the frog. That is going to point to the center of the hoof. That is where, that's when a, hoof, when a hoof is straight all the way around, that's gonna point to the center of the hoof. So notice also on the right and on the left in the back, especially on the left-hand side, how it's cracking right there and broken. Those are called quarter cracks. That's why I tell you, don't put more than four nails in a mule or donkey's shoe, no more. Because if you put more than four, you get back in there and it's already really soft because it has the donkey foot. It's already soft and you put a nail in it, you're going to make it be even more of a problem. So that right there is a perfect example of a nice frog, good, healthy frog. They trimmed it up with a knife, which is okay, but it's not something I do much of. A frog sheds off, so it'll naturally keep to a shape. It's okay to clean it up to make it look nice like this one did. Again, the frog is pointing to the center of the foot, the sole, okay? Right to the very front of the outside wall. Perfect. Now that's a nice foot, except for the quarter cracks. Now expect those folks, expect those, but expect it even more, even more when you put nails in it, all right? Go to the next picture. There we are, all right? Notice how the feet are setting down, but look at the left foot, how it's pointing out even more than the right foot, okay? Now, he, you can see he squared up these feet, these shoes, by doing corrective shoeing. It's more expensive, but it's worthwhile to have your mule walking straight, okay? It's imperative. So uh, with this corrective shoeing, they brought the heel up so that, that now, now remember this folks, the, the bevel of the, of the shoulder, the angle of the shoulder, that should be the angle of the foot. That's gonna be the next picture here. Okay, now, right now, if you look, you can see how on the back of the shoe, they put these extra padding there to be able to get the mule to stand up according to the shoulder. Now, of course, I can't see the shoulder, so you know I've got to go by what the, oh, there we go, there's one of the shoulder. All right, look at the shoulder. Is that, there we go, look at the shoulder. Look at the slope of the shoulder, and then look at the slope of the hoof. Is this the, the slope itself. right here, Steve? Is this what you're talking about, this yeah, area? Yeah, keep on following all the way up to the wither. You see that light color? Right here? Straight on down. That's the slope of the shoulder. Right now, it's a little bit off because the foot is going forward right now. But going back to the shoulder, from the wither down to the esophagus is roughly the slope that you want all four feet to be in. So it's not a matter of measuring everyone. It's not a matter of putting a, a, a measurement on it. It's a matter of the looks of it. Look at the slope of the shoulder. Look at each one of the hooves. Now the back hooves are more like the front hooves. Look at that. You can see the left rear and the right front. And you can see how they're almost identical. That looks good. Only because this barrier did right by the mule and brought the heels up in the back. Now we're not pulling on a suspensory. We're not pulling on tendons. And that's the problem, folks. That's the problem is when they're not shot correctly, you're going to have pressure on the wrong places on that foot. You may think you're going down the road nice, but that mule is in pain. 
Get that in your mind, folks. Get that in your mind. Oh, I don't have to chew my mule because he don't need shoes. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, especially if they're not correct. Don't try to save yourself some money or think you're different because you've got a mule and you don't have to do anything with it. Yes, you've got to take care of that mule. And the feet, if you do not trim the feet and do it every eight weeks and keep shoes on that mule so that the frog stays good and healthy, like the one picture we saw, so that the frog stays healthy, you're going to end up with a mule that's in pain. And the problem is this, folks. This is the problem. You got a mule and a donkey. Mules can be so sullen. Where do they get that? From the donkey. They can literally be standing up one minute and fall off dead the, the next minute because they don't show pain like horses. They don't blow up like horses and crazy things like that, which is another story. So, see, this is right. Here's a lady trying to take care of an animal she loves. The proper feet and the proper shoeing and trimming. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's look at that foot. Real quick, okay. there's Yolanda right there. Hey, Yolanda, there she is. Right there, there. she is right there, holding down is the Netherlands. Really What's that? Was, was that her? I think so. Because she wasn't in my saddle. Ah, Yolanda. Who was that? I, I, somebody oh, else. Okay. Now, this is, you see here, there we go. Two nails. You see that? Two on the right, two on the left. That's a left front foot, I believe. Notice how the frog is pointing toward the center of the shoe. The shoe's off a little bit, just a little bit, but it's enough that it's fine. He's slowly but surely going to be able to correct that foot, bring that foot over square so that the frog is pointing toward the center of the foot. All right. Notice four nails, folks. That's all. That's all a mule needs. There you go. And the heels look pretty good here, too. The frog is nice and big. Yeah, the frog's nice and healthy, good bulbs, really nice bulbs, and the shoe follows the, the, the foot from what I can see. But there again, it's difficult. Now there, again, okay? There we are. Now, I don't quite understand that. That must be the old, that's the old foot right there. That's the old shoe. And look how that mule is laying down on the heel. Do y'all see that? Yeah. Now, Dave, if we can go back to the rear Feet, the other feet go down, go down more, 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 right there. Okay, no, go up where it shows the two feet, up right oh, there. Oh, sorry, Steve. That's it. No, you're forgiven. Do 10 hell cowboys, your sins will be forgiven. Okay, notice, folks, how now that foot is standing up more to the slope of that shoulder, okay, compared to this one here, how it's laying down. You all see the difference in that? Okay. Look at the difference. Now the animal is not pulling on its rear tendon or a suspensory, any of that. There's correct. And the other one is incorrect. There. See how it's laying down on the heel? Not. Okay. Let's go back over to the seat in the, the side view of the mule. Right. <clears throat> Let's go up one more. A couple more. I think I saw one where, where he was standing still. Go on up. Oh, uh, where was it? Right there. Uh, come down. There. Hey, now. That looked right. Go back. There we go. There's the right saddle. Okay. She does have it ahead, and we've already fixed this problem, okay, uh, where I told her she had it up on the scapula. There we go. So let's go back to the picture below that when the mule is darker. Notice, folks, this. Notice this. How much darker it's a, this mule is now compared to before. That's what your gray mules do, gray horses. They start out dark and then going lighter, okay? Look at the slope of that shoulder. And look back then, way back then, how much more heel is on this mule than when that other farrier had cut it all down. Look at the heel down there on that right rear leg. And look at the heels there, and look, look at how much more heel there is there. And you can see it on the other foot too. Okay, so folks, 
See, that's what it looked like when she got this mule as a younger mule. All right. So there we are. There's a there's some education on 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 the feet. And folks, listen, you know, you, you've got to take care of these animals. You got to do it. And if you don't have a foot, you don't have a mule. You yeah. don't have a donkey. You don't. OK, don't think and listen to these people who say you don't have to shoe contracted heels ruins an animal and they get it from their daddy the donkey so there's there's a lot yolanda went through a lot and remember she lives in in uh, um holland okay yeah. and she had to drive clear over to belgium i think it was she'll probably tell us where she had to go to she literally had to go to another country to be able to get her meal shot right we yeah. would go to New Mexico, because I wouldn't go to that other place, that west there, I forget what it's called, what California Cation, something like that. What place? Anyway, it's another story. I don't want to get knocked off of, uh, to, uh, of Facebook. So, <laughs> yeah. Next, next. That's next. good stuff. That's good stuff. Thanks for sent, taking all the time to send that in, Yolanda. Appreciate it. Kayla is watching. Ask the question Does the come along rope work well when training a, a weanling? Yes. I can tell you that I am literally taking babies right out of their sack, right out of the placenta. I've taken them right up, rubbed on them, rubbed their all, all their juices and stuff all over my arms and stuff, all over my body. And I did that for a reason. I'll talk about it. Then he got to where he'd stand up and move it around. And then I take a base piece of baling twine and I created a come along hitch. And I put it on him, and I asked his nose to go to the right. I asked his nose to go to the left, and I asked the nose to tip down. I did little tiny steps before he even got to say, hi, Mom. He got to see Uncle Steve first. Now, later on, I wore that same shirt every time I went in to see that mule, and that mule come running to me because he could smell that smell of that first time that I touched him. So yes, use the come along hitch on everything, including if you have low standards and you work around horses. David says, when I pony my six month old Molly mule, she climbs up on the rear of my gelding. She thinks it's playtime. I'm you, <coughs> excuse me. I'm using the come along rope. Is there something specific I should do other than shaking the rope? Yeah, you go back and get your timing in, partner, because if that mule or donkey is already up on her, that's your timing, okay? That's your timing. Yes, shake it, wiggle it back and forth, but before you should take and be leading them with your horse, you should be doing your groundwork to where you wiggle the rope right, left, and the mule moves back. You move the rope to the right or to the left, and the mule follows it on a light touch unfortunately we tend to always go to the end like leading before we do our groundwork solid because obviously obviously because the mule is already up on the hip your timing is not there folks this is why i tell you to use the come along hitch do your groundwork so that you improve your muscle memory timing Okay, that's that's it's super important. It, this ain't just a matter of leading, folks. This is also teaching you. And when you're timing, all of a sudden the meal goes to run off. You know, quickly to grab up the reins and go right, left, right, left. You hear that? How did you learn that from doing your groundwork and a come along hitch? Awesome. Uh, we've got Kayla watching 100 degrees hot and dry in Arizona, and I can confirm that Kayla is telling the truth. Good to have you here, Kayla. Gabriel's watching. How do you deal with a mule that kicks when you try to grab cinches or any ropes hanging low? That mule's telling you something, Steve. What's that mule saying? Mm, that mule says, I got a problem here that, that uh, we need to fix. Now, it could be that uh, you've tightened your cinches all at one time. Uh, it could be that uh, the mule is, is a little tender on the belly. I don't know what, what it could be, but this is all time. But this is where the come along hitch comes in. The mule is saying, don't touch my belly. 
Now, a lot of times what happens is these mules get touchy on the belly is because we've tried to cinch the cinch all at one time. Cinch it up a little, walk around in a circle. Cinch it up a little bit more, walk around in a circle. That is, and Dave, I think we probably got a video on that. That's how you do it. But again, the, all the mule is saying to you is, don't do that. Well, <clears throat> if you want to touch his belly or any place, you should be able to do it without him kicking at you. But the come along hitch on, and if he kicks at you, that is where you're going to have me come unglued. I will try to rip his nose off. I will. I won't put up with that attitude. Now, in the very beginning, I'll just do a slight bump and say, don't do that. But if he kicks at me again, I'm going to hit him harder. And if he kicks at me again, ask tell the man, I am going to rip his nose off because I am not going to have that mule telling me that he, I can't touch someplace or reach for something. Folks, the come along hitch teaches these animals not only go right, go left, back up, stop, this sort of thing, but also says what you're doing is going to cause you a lot of discomfort because I don't like the attitude. Yeah, so um, real quick, oh man, there was something that I was going to say, Steve. You said something and I was going to... <sighs> It'll come back to me. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I put oh, yeah. a link to the mule saddle training course in the comment section. And folks, we haven't recommended it much so far this year just because it hasn't really come up. But the mule saddle training course is absolutely free. It's got over 10 videos in there. It's like 11, 12, or 13. And there's a section in there where Steve goes through exactly how you want to get everything saddled up. And he talks about how to tighten the cinches and you don't want to use um, the cinches that only tighten from one side. You want to tighten from both sides. And it goes into all of the reasons why in the video it's free. It's in the comment section. Click, get that. You will not regret Did it. Uh, Lisa is watching from Italy. What's that, Steve? Did you just use the F-bomb? Yeah, free? free, baby. It's free, baby. Free. Yeah, go check it out. It's in the comment section. Get it for free, baby. Uh, that's the F-bomb we love. Uh, let's see here. Lisa is watching from Italy, 12, 20 past midnight. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, Lane says, Steve, do you think of the Aparayo style salmon river pack for mule packing? Aparayo style sal yeah, salmon river that, pack? Yeah. Apa, it's, it's actually Spanish for pack. Okay. And so what about it? Um, it's, uh, I guess, what do you think of it? Well, it's basically another way to pack. It's the, the Spanish word for, for box, you know, for pack outfit. So, I mean, you can use that. It's, it's just another way to pack. It's another way to put things in, to put on the mule, to pack it back in the mountains. Very good. So all for it. Trace is watching from Lawnwood, Queensland, Australia. Gone International. Beautiful day there. Good to have you here, Trace. David is watching from Port Angeles, Washington. Tonda says, can you tell me what age do you start using the come along rope on a baby? And Tonda, I'm going to tell you, we don't use them on babies. They are humans. They, uh, they're too young to respond. They are still, they just, uh, it's not a tool for a baby. Now, if you're talking mules, I'll let Steve answer that, but I've never used the come along rope on a baby and um, my kids have turned out good so far. We'll see how it goes. Steve, what if she wants to use them on a young mule? Well, we, actually, we just talked about that uh, where I said I, well, when they're still in a placenta, I take them yeah. out, put the string on and put it around their head and I give them nose right and left. I don't, I rarely use halters, folks, okay? Now, is it okay for you all to use a halter? Yeah. But if you look at any of my videos or pictures, you will rarely see me use a halter underneath the bridle. I always teach my animals to be ground tied and be respectful of the rain or the, the whatever I'm using, I'm leading because that respectability came from the come along hitch. Now, what makes the come along hitch so unique? I communicate to all the main points that communicate to the mule. 
When the head goes back like he's going to pull back, the come along hits back behind the ears, makes him uncomfortable. When he goes and starts to go forward and I bump him on the nose, that tells him to stop or don't go no more. When I pick up on the, the rope and I go to the left or to the right, the rope underneath here that goes around the nose and also communicates, that teaches them by touching here on the right, go to the left, and on the left, go to the right. It touches nerves, touches nerves, touches nerves, and in the back, touches nerves, okay? Now, by that, I can communicate fully and totally to the Mueller donkey. Now, you'll notice that when you go to shows and even in the pictures of my granddaughter leading the animal, they've got chains on them. But you won't see my granddaughter pull on that chain. She knows what it'll do. What did she do? She did the groundwork first with a come along. Then I barely have to touch the bridle rein to lead or the, the or if I'm showing the lead chain and show shank. Awesome. All right, let's keep moving on here. Steve, uh, time is flying. It's it's uh, 45 minutes past the hour. So we're going to try and hustle through, uh, make sure we can get everything answered today. This one was emailed by Megan. And Megan, uh, it, when you watch this, she may not be watching right now, but when you watch this, thank you so much for reminding me. Um, I don't know how I missed your question. I had it listed. So my apologies, really appreciate the grace. Here was Megan's question. Good to see you all back on Wednesdays. I have a topic for discussion. When using the come along rope recently to get my donkey to take some syringe meds, I was figuring the tightening of the rope around the nose as he was jerking and backing away would get his attention and make him stand. We fought it out for a little while and then I realized maybe the tightening of the rope itself wasn't sufficient and I needed to get ahead of his jerking and bump his nose myself. He seemed to listen better after I bumped him a couple times. What are your thoughts? Exactly. Bumping, folks, does more than a steady pull. A steady pull will make the donkey, will make the mule brace you. Bump, bump, bump. They're looking for you to let go of them. Bump, 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 bump. They're looking for you to let go. All right? That's what they're looking for. And a split second. And again, folks, it's always your timing. You know, you, everybody says, man, Steve, it looks really good when you do it. Yeah, yeah. My timing has been there for a while. I'm losing it, but anyway, it's another story. So bump, bump, bump. That gets you more. Ask, tell the man, okay? And they will get that because that is the language they understand, folks. That's what they understand. So bumping, yes, will get you more, okay? Make sure they can understand to stand still first. When Anybody can make one move. But get them to stand still. That's the most important thing. Awesome. This next question comes in from Ron. Uh, it says, I purchased six or seven months ago the Come Along Rope rope Halter with the foundation training video. He's talking about the ground foundation training kit, folks. Uh, get that kit. Come Along Rope, Rope Halter, and instructional video. The Mule Riders Martingale as well with your video and your saddle breaching breast collar too. Wow, he went in for the whole shebang. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate that. We've done the groundwork on my mule for six months a couple of times a week. We are ready to go to the next step with Daisy, meaning to start riding her. What DVD do you recommend for the next step in training for us to start riding her? I have sat on her with the saddle and everything. So has my wife, Virginia. But that has been one of us, uh, but that has been with one of us leading her around in the round pen. We need to get the next step video to show us how to get her moving and turning and such as she will just stand there and it's hard to get her to move if we don't lead her around. Leading her she does good, but we can't seem to get her move without leading her. I was thinking maybe it would be Colt start starting Colt training DVD or the come along commute or the communication DVD or both. Let me know and we will order whichever one we need. Well, my suggestion is do the uh, the Colt Foundation video series. It's five videos, and you'll see every everybody in that video series. Everybody, this is the first time they've ever ridden a Colt. We've done our ground foundation work. 
at the DJ Bar Ranch in uh, in, in in Belgrade, Montana, at uh, Jeanette Carlson's place, and we you see each one of those people doing that foundation work. And then we did some work here as well at the ranch. You'll see some of the riders there. But each one, these mules, it's the first time they've been ridden. And yes, it's nice that the mule's not moving. That's good. That's real good. They should only move when you pick up the lead rope. Watch the video. You'll see me using the come along hitch underneath the mule rider's martingale so that I have control. So if the mule would do something that's not acceptable because the ground communication kit is right, right, okay? The, as soon as I barely move the lead rope, the mule is going to respond and not make a serious mistake. That's it. Uh, David, who hopefully you're still watching, David, here's a follow-up question. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we answered the question about the come-along rope with a molly mule uh, and the maintenance of the come-along rope, cleaning, etc. He says, uh, a question for this week, Steve talks about the development of the mule's legs at a young age and how they are affected by how well the hooves are balanced and through proper trimming. He also mentioned that genetics from the father donkey play a role. Here's a picture of my six month old Molly mule. Her back legs have been sort of knee knocked. Let me see if I can get this up here real quick. Give me just one second. It's called cow hocked. Cow hocked, okay. Let me see, can I get this in here? Let me see, add it. Um, give me a second, Steve. I'm doing this on the fly. Um, new scene and preview image. Okay, can you see that there? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Her back legs have been sort of, sort of, uh, uh, hawked, uh, in the back since birth. I've trimmed her feet as much as I can, considering she doesn't stand for it, especially on her left. Should I be concerned? Is there anything I should start to do at this point? Um, I have your come along rope, but I'm not using it because she is static tied and I have your halter, but it's too big for her at this point. She stands better with the come along rope, but only use it when I'm right there with her. So there you go, Steve. What would you say? Okay. The teachable moment. This is always important for me to have a teachable moment. Number one, you notice the colt is tied to an inner tube around the post. Okay. You see the inner tube attached to the lead rope going over to the mule. Now here's the problem with that, okay? Is that number one, the lead rope is too high. Never tie any animal more than with her height. Pretty much, if I'm gonna tie it all, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much gonna try to tie with her height. So the reason for this, if the mule should pull back, I don't jerk out the neck, neck uh, vertebrae, and I don't jerk out places on the back as well. It's a good possibility of them flipping over, okay? So that's what I don't do, okay? The halter that's on there is not adjusted correctly. Notice it's too far behind the ears and will not communicate to the mule quality enough so that the mule knows not to pull back. Use the come along hitch. Don't use this old method. Now, don't get me wrong. I've used this method right here for years until I hurt enough animals, and, and I mean hurt them, uh, so I quit it, you know. Use the come on hitch. I literally, if I'm going to, to shoe one of my mules, I literally throw the come along hitch, the rope, the lead part on the ground, and they stand there perfect while I pick up all four feet, and I trim them and shoe them. I never tie my mules when I'm shoeing. Never have, okay? Well, I mean, once I learned about the come along hitch, that was it. So for 25 years now, probably 30 if I look at it, I never tie one up when I'm shoeing. And you'll see me rarely tie one up when I'm saddling, rarely, okay? So uh, uh, don't get me wrong now, there is a time like at the DJ, at the, uh, at the- uh, Andrada? Uh, Parada, yeah, thank you ranch where we're all tying them together and we got all kinds of different people all kinds of animals well yeah a lot's going on there i'll do it then but my preference with my little mule rocky is to go off to one corner 
Throw the lead rope on the ground, saddle him up, and go. All right, now let's go back. When you pick up on a mule, now this is a good-looking mule. Nice hip, nice rounded hip. I'd like to see him from the side. Nice keen head. Looks like he's been, that his mother must have been a quality, quality mare. Now, it is not unusual to have a baby cow hawk. That's what it is when the knees are close together. It's not that unusual. Mainly because you have to also think about it. When you look at a lot of your draft animals, they're close in the hawk. And some of your quarter type horses are too. All right. But when you take that problem and go along with a, a donkey that's really bad cow hawk, you could create a problem. So what would I do? I would be trimming on this mule so that his feet would be straight. Now, the back foot is always a problem on all your mules and donkeys. Why is that? We pick up the foot incorrectly. We do. Okay. So I've got to come along, hitch on me, and Dave, you can you can give them that video so they can watch it. I've got the come along hitch with me. I do not have the mule tied up, and I'm going to pick up a back foot. I pick up the back foot. I come forward first, go straight back and over to the left. I do not pick it straight up and go out. I always pull it forward toward the shoulder slowly, and then I come straight back, and I come back to the center underneath the tail. And I do that on both sides. Again, the video is going to help you. Uh, but my suggestion is, folks, you see, this is the way we did it for years. You know, we had a lot of colts tied up, and we'd halter train them in this way. Well, the problem is the colts would fall and hurt themselves, pull back. Later on, we had problems because we crippled them and didn't realize we had crippled them when we started saddling, and we had vertebrae out of place. A lot of things happened. So I don't do it the old way anymore. If the halter was adjusted correctly and it was down lower so that it meant something but it has to be tied hard and fast not to a rubber inner tube that's going to give i don't want the animal to move so when i have my halter properly adjusted and i have them on a place where i'm tying them if they go to the right because it's tied hard and fast when i go to the right it bumps their nose when I go to the left, it bumps the nose immediately, immediately. That way they know if they are incorrect, the halter corrects them. That's why a properly adjusted halter makes all the difference in the world. Instead of pulling on the side of the mule, it should pull underneath so that you're pulling straight ahead. And I can go into a lot more, but that's enough for now. Let's have some other questions. Awesome. So uh, I got another collection of images here. Uh, this one was sent in by Valerie. Uh, she says, I've tried. So Valerie sent in a message uh, a couple weeks ago um, wanting saddles for her uh, pony. And so, um, and so we talked a little bit there. She sent in these pictures. She says, I've tried a pony saddle, full quarter bars with six and a half inch gullet, seven gullet with semi bars. I put my saddle that's too big, but just to check the bars, uh, it's weighed seven gullet full quarter horse bars. I bet a pony saddle. Um, her shoulders move differently. Picture of mom and dad I got from the original owner when she found me and brought her. Thank you. I've, I'll go put my saddle on and take a pic. So here's, here's the pictures that she sent in. Any further comments here um, to share with her, uh, maybe helping her get something that will fit? Yeah, well, I, my bars are not going to work on your horse they got a completely different back okay now go back one yeah right there notice folks no rear cinch notice folks saddle ten on top of the scapula now yes yes it's a horse okay but the back of the saddle is coming up in the back and when your rider is moving as the rider goes up and down the saddle is bumping on that scapula and the, and therefore the back is going to be hurt. Yes, a rear cinch, folks, on a horse needs to be a front and rear cinch. The back one can be loose, the front one snugger because of the way the horse is built. But my bars will make this little pony really uncomfortable. And I would love to say, yep, yeah, buy it, it'll be fine. No, don't do it. It will not work. Folks, on saddles, the purpose of two D-rings, two on the left, two on the right, is to keep 
the saddle from cantilevering. Now, I had a, a guy ask me today, he says, don't your spur get hung up in the cinch? I said, no. Why would you want to have your leg in the rear cinch? Rear cinch. Why would you want to have your leg that far back? It also, when you go to kick, it m- makes you go forward like this. So it changes the whole communication to your riding animal. You have folks ab- about six to eight inches that you can move your 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 spur, your heel, to be able to communicate. In the center here, that makes the mule side pass. In the front one, that makes the mule turn on the hindquarters. And the rear one makes the mule turn on the the forehand. Okay? So the front end stays in place, back end comes around. Now, you don't need to move your legs much to communicate go right, go left, and this sort of thing. But when you buy a saddle, use the rear cinch and take off those silly billets. You don't need them. All they're going to do is create problems. Put four nylon tie straps all the way around so that your cinches are even. And remember, if you want your animal comfortable, why that little bitty strap? Okay? It, that's uncomfortable. Put a nice big wide cinch on the back, nice big wide cinch on the front, about four inches. Have a comfortable animal. Why not have a comfortable animal? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we got another question here. This one comes from Dennis. And uh, basically, long story short, they had a really great experience with an animal, uh, with a mule, a molly. And so they went and pick, picked up the molly and uh, drove uh, and stopped on the way home, Western Supply Store, to get uh, Morocco fitted with a saddle. Um, the owner had just had one that Uh, pass away a mule pass away that she had for 33 years and so was familiar with how to fit a mule anyways the saddle's fine but the girth or cinch we picked out is too long i've seen yours i want to buy two but i'm not sure how to measure for the right size can you tell me how to do that um so i'm going to send him a video how to measure but i wanted to give you an opportunity steve just to talk a little bit about um you know this situation right here and making sure that it all fits and works together Number one, folks, you cannot tell a saddle fits with all the rigging plates and leather and everything on. It's impossible. Impossible. If you got just a bare tree, which we have on our saddle fit free F-bomb, free saddle fit, then you can see the actual tree setting on the animal. Now, take a look at your saddle. If it has three billets on it, it's not made for a mule. Billet, a long strap that goes in the back, right and left, and one on the right front. That is designed for a horse, not a mule. You want to evenly distribute those cinches. Now, second part. Second part, and this is really important. This is extremely important. The back of the saddle, where the two parts of the saddle come together, okay? where the two come together. That needs to be open through there. If it is stitched together, you're going to create a fistula because the skirting is rubbing on the mule's back. That's what it's doing. And it's going to create more and more and more problems. So there you go. You know, uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, I've gone into these little saddle shops, Dave, and I've had my short britches on. And I come in and say, hey, I, I, I got, I'm a new mule owner. Show me which one of these saddles is going to work on my mule. And they tell you all these stories. Folks, listen, every saddle that you see in these stores is either semi-quarter horse, like the lady said with the pony, or they're full quarter horse. So they're six inches wide, but they're seven inches wide. That is industrial standards. Now, If they say it's a mule saddle, well, you can say anything in the world. But there's a major difference in where the rigging plates are, rounded skirts, and things like this. And so that saddle fit uh, program, folks, read that. Watch it, I should say. It's free. There's the F-bomb that I like to use. It's free. It's free. It's free. Just like Dave right here. This guy here, he set it up so you guys can have all this free stuff. I wouldn't know how to do it, but my, my, my son here, I call him my son, okay? 
I borrow him once or twice a week anyway. And, and he's, he's done all this. So it's you guys have the information. I have folks all the time, Dave. They say, man, we're really grateful for all the information you got out there. But folks, I have to pat this guy on the back, okay? Because he's the one that has the knowledge. I'm the brawn, he's the braid <laughs> of putting these shows together, you know, these programs. So, you know, give Dave once in a while, hey, Dave, thank you. Everybody, everybody give him a kudu up there. Throw kudos up there on the screen so he can see it. Because this guy is what did it, folks, okay? And we've only got a little bit of the videos. <laughs> you wouldn't believe all the stuff Dave's got, you know, that he's got to get out there yet. We got stuff when I train animals in Alaska, when I train mules in Egypt, when I train mules in Brazil, all over uh, Israel. You know, the stuff has still got to come out, folks. Uh, I don't know if he's being lazy or what, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Steve. Lane's watching. So we've got, we've got, it's, we're past, it's 407. Do you have a few extra minutes, Steve? Sure. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's do her. Okay. Let's see if we can get through these real quick. Give me the short answers. Um, sure. I'll, I'll just blow through here. Lane's watching from Oregon. Jack is here from Johannesburg. Uh, Callan is watching from Utah. Susan, uh, let's see. Cindy is watching from Tennessee. Uh, Susan says, do you recommend oiling my new ultralight saddle that I just received and also the Tapadero stirrups? No, I don't recommend oiling them now. Now listen, folks, one of the things I talked about in my video, and she should have got the video, the digital video, ask her if she did or not. Anyway, one of the things I talk about in there is I do not heavy oil my saddles. I light oil them. What I want you to do is shape the saddle to you. Okay, and you do that by taking a bottle of soapy water in a spray bottle, wet the back half of the fenders, turn the fenders, put a stick in them overnight, wet underneath the jockeys. Now, if you want to shape leather, you have to wet it. And when you use soap, it keeps the moisture in there longer. Now, you're getting ready to ride, you pull the stick out, and you wet the back half, and you go ride. You ride, you ride, you ride. You may ride six months. And then finally you say to yourself, okay, everything's the way I like it. Then and only then do you start oiling it. But don't get in a hurry to oil it, shape it, okay? Now listen, folks, this is the other thing. When you store your saddles, store them with a piece of PVC pipe or a broom handle or something so that your, your fenders are correct. They're not like this. They're like this. I hate seeing pictures that people send to me of the, of the, of the stirrup pointing like this, okay? They should be point that way. That's the way your feet are going. That was a long part of a short part. Go ahead. Awesome. Roger's watching from Milan, New York. Myra's here. Cooler temperatures in SoCal. Just came in from a short ride. Lane asks, uh, Steve, uh, let's see. Oh, we talked about that, Lane. The Aparayo uh, style river packing. Go for it. Uh, Leslie's watching from Carlton, Washington. Glad to have you here, Leslie. Um, let's see. Ted is watching. Good to have you here. Nancy is watching. Nancy and Donkey from 78 Degrees Mountain City, Tennessee. Um, let's see here. Emergency farrier had to come out last night due to the fact that regular farrier hasn't been able to come out for over three months. Um, let's see. I'm thankful for you, the information on these learning tools and pictures. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Jarrett is watching on YouTube. Says, if a mule has a long, skinny frog, how do you get them to grow a better frog? Well, that, that's usually because they're contracted, because the heel is coming around. So what you have to do is you have to correct your shoeing and bring the heel out. And you do that by taking the branches of the shoe, okay? This is the back of the shoes right here, okay? And the branches of the shoe, and the, your farrier is going to tilt the branches so that when the foot comes down, it moves out and it spreads the back of the foot out. It could take two or three years sometimes. Now, folks, it could also depend on how small of a foot that you got. Now, if you've got a foot with a triple lot shoe on it, then you're not going to have a big old fat, happy frog completely on the front, but you will have on the back. There you go. Let's see here. Uh, Hannah's watching from Florida. Uh, Kayla says, do you take training clients currently to help humans with our mule foals? I'll answer that. So right now, there is we don't do any type of private instruction in person. We do this. 
And so uh, just with uh, the Steve's schedule, the things he has going on, firefighting, uh, travel, uh, being a granddad, all of the different things, it's just not in the schedule right now, which is why we decided to do these weekly clinics here. We can help more people for free rather than a few people for you know, quite expensive. So that's the current state. However, uh, Steve and I need to sit down, come up with some dates for some clinics because we would love to have you, Kayla, come out as well as so many other folks who are tuning in. We would love to have you come out and be a part. So be on the lookout for when that happens. And if you're not getting Steve's newsletter, send a message, support at muleranch.com. I'll get you added and we'll take care of that there. Um, but keep asking your questions because we want to help you. Warren is watching from Prescott. Um, Levi coming in late from Albert County, New Brunswick, Canada, international. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Steve and Dave. Uh, for helping us getting the correct next DVD for getting us riding our mule daisy. Awesome. Pat asks, Steve, when riding in rocks, should I have drill tech or borium on my mule shoes? Thank you. Uh, it's not really important to have drill tech or borium. Now, what that is, Dave, is to where it's some stuff that you actually put on the shoes, mm -hmm. on the toe and on the heel, so that you got bite. And uh, we usually do that when we're in really icy areas, <coughs> like at the Grand Canyon. Uh, during the winter time, it's slick, and that's when the borium or the drill tech really bites in. But otherwise, folks, I just use normal shoes. I shape them. I use St. Croix shoes. They nice. They bend nice. They're easy to work, and that's what I use. Um, Mark says, Hey guys, it's 4 PM. Thanks for your show. You're going on overtime. That's right. This is where it gets double free. This is double free mule and donkey training. Shelly's watching from British, British Columbia, Canada international. Again, uh, James is watching from Holden, Missouri. Um, Tonda says, thank, Oh, they're all saying, thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Thank you all. Appreciate that. Uh, Kayla says we would love a clinic. Thank you. Well, Kayla, make sure that if you're not getting Steve's emails, uh, just send me a message. I'll make sure you get added and we'll get you an invite. Steve, that's everything for this week. Thanks for taking a, a you know, few extra minutes here to make sure folks get their answers. I know they appreciate it. Well, that's, that's, it's okay, Dave. Here's the deal. Like with Yolanda, you know, folks, it is difficult to find a good farrier. It really is. And Yolanda put forth the effort. Good for her. Um, but let's, let's put forth the effort for these animals, folks. They depend upon us to feed them correctly, to shoe them correctly, to treat them with respect. And, and I can't tell you how many people I get so frustrated with. Oh, they don't want to buy a bridge in because... It's too much more, and they don't want to put a rear cinch on. No, no, folks. Treat the animal with dignity and respect and enjoy this life. The idea of this mule and this donkey is to take you out of this sorry world that we have and enjoy life, you know, um, and go from there. Yeah. I mean, they are going back to the story of creation. They are here to number one, display and showcase the creativity of the creator. So number one, they glorify God just by existing, showing off his creativity and his brilliance. But then on top of that, we've been given dominion over all of creation, which is just an incredible gift in and of itself that something as wonderful as creation would then be entrusted to us, to humans, created in the image of God. That's just an incredible gift. And so you're absolutely right, Steve. It's not an invitation. It is a responsibility, which is why we love doing this, helping folks fulfill that responsibility. And we love all of the other folks out there who are helping with all different areas to help us fulfill our responsibility in all sorts of different ways. Uh, but yeah, we, we really do appreciate folks tuning in and hanging out with us. Uh, Cindy, I think has the best comment. She says, yay, Steve and Dave, best match team for our mules. That's right. We'll throw the, we'll throw the, uh, the yoke on there and we'll carry it together. Steve, it's good to do this with you. Thank you for hanging out folks. Thank you for watching. And, uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah. Yep, I sure will. Blessings to you, my brother. Hey, take care of that mules and donkeys. If you love them, you won't overfeed them. There we go. Take care. We'll see y'all. Bye-bye.